Chan Muna, we got your gaming needs with hot topics, hot tweets, and spicy as memes. I'm Marissa Roberto. And I'm Brody Boer. What do you keep doing with my name, dude? <laughs> Jesus, you know how this show works. Producer Lisa has two minutes on the board for each topic, and we will present and possibly argue. Luckily for all of us, there is a mute button, as usual, and we may even use it today to shut the other one up. Yeah, I know. I'm a little scared because Lisa is actually in our ears today, so Can we um, shut her up? watch out, everyone who knows my, what might come out of our mouths. We love it. Chat when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. So let's get to it for our first story. Just when you think one Face Clan lawsuit is enough, another one comes out of nowhere. That's right, Face Clan is facing its second lawsuit in a month. This time around, Face is being sued by its former social media partner, Hubrick. They allege that Face broke away from the company and raided its offices overnight, taking dozens of computers and equipment that were filled with valuable data. Hubrick also states that they helped fund Face to the tune of 1.3 million US dollars and are demanding over 1 million for interfering with their operations. Brody, first of all, this is unbelievable. Uh, it, I, I just don't even know where to start with this. How about um, this we is start the second with time the FaZe is being accused of something evil. Let's start with the facts that we don't have. What? There's two sides to every story. Yeah, um, you're right. Now this is starting to get a little. I'm starting to be like, okay, maybe FaZe is the bad guy here. Uh, because we're seeing a lot more. Um, or it's just easy pickings for a lot of these people don't have real good base, but people are gonna support them. Now, when it comes to the actual lawsuits, evidence will be key here. Um, yeah. They're saying they went in and stole stuff. When did they actually split? When did this happen? Why is it only happening now? Mm. Um, maybe they think stuff was stolen or FaZe took computers that they thought were theirs and didn't realize there was stuff on there. Maybe FaZe had no idea. Yeah, but they're also, claiming a raid that company is, is defunct now. So maybe they just need money. Uh, okay, maybe, but then why would they spend money on lawyers? Like, this is going to be an expensive Because you can get a million dollars out of it. No, Brody, honestly, lawyers are crazy expensive, especially if it's going to be something like this where there's gonna, there's, there's huge accusations here. There's going to be a long-winded lawsuit, long-winded uh, negotiations that need to happen here. So uh, I'm not sure. maybe it's a marketing stunt for their new marketing company. You think? And they're going to get Yo, business out of this. Somebody get this guy a tinfoil hat right now. <laughs> like, you are, you're really taking us somewhere, Brody. I mean, if that's true, I will buy you lunch next week. That's if, all if I get out of this is lunch? I don't even know. Like, that just seems so out there. You, you think they want, they're a defunct company, but that you can, maybe if they sue FaZe, it'll bring them back to life? No, I think they just want their stuff back. Like, I'm pretty sure that's all they're after here and, and some money for ruining their lives. Yeah, no, I, I, don't, I don't think that. I was just saying it, just in case, maybe. And then if it does come back to it later that I'm right, well, I can clip just that moment. Oh, my God. But let's talk <laughs> about the fact that FaZe is just out there, man. Like, I've always had this, yeah. especially since just the way they are on social media, especially banks. He has, like, no filter, and that's fine because it entertains all of us. I don't see this being the end of it for esports in general. I mean, like, you, you have a bunch of kids that grew up playing video games that have no idea how to run a business, and now they're in a business. <sighs> they're probably doing shady things. I don't think this is the end of it. We're, in the next few years, we're going to have a lot of these. Oh, this is definitely not the end. Yeah. Are you crazy? We're going to have all kinds of drama. Let's talk to you guys mm -hmm. about it. Oh, yeah. Anyways. Over in CSGO, Astralis coach Zonic is defending the team's decision to skip multiple big events over the past few months. Astralis skipped IEM Sydney and Star Series Season 7 in favor of the Blast Pro Series, which some were saying is less competitive. Zonic said that the team skipped some events because of travel plans, prestige, player health, and many other reasons. He emphasized that the only thing that matters to him to take care is to take care of his players, and if that means skipping tournaments in favor of a longer career, then they're going to skip tournaments. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Um, I got one little fishy bit in there is oh, that you get a little fishy bit? they're going to one that's a little less competitive yeah, to ma true. main on the keep their prestige okay but they've already proven themselves time and time again that they are amazing yeah, why not spend no yeah no, now okay, their win streak is okay. just because they're beating scrubs uh, okay they're not beating scrubs that's they're beating cheating. They, they're not cheating. cheating they're playing good players they just don't have to play those good players as many times in a series because yes the blast pro series is a little more lax but they're still competing they're still playing CS go and they're competing for amazing prize pools and ha and get to be part of an awesome production of course they're going to say yes to the blast pro series and i'm pretty sure one of the owners this is speculation but i'm pretty sure one of the owners of um astralis also has money invested in blast pro series so yeah he's definitely like feeding into know. that for sure Marissa, what why can't they go to these i don't understand like their fans are upset now because they're not winning all the time they're still winners that's like they're still here, winning this. that's like playing a 1v1 me playing a 1v1 against tyler in rocket league he's uh -huh. pretty good so we go back and forth but you know say uh -huh. i got five wins and then i play you and then i claim i have six wins no that's not six wins that's five wins in a warm-up Pretty, 
No, that was a terrible that, example. No, you that's just a good, used that. that you, just going, to, you just wanted to torch me yeah. with terrible Rocket League skills. Yeah. That's te- terrible. But no, terrible it's a really, no, it's a good analogy. It's like if they you can they count that really as a win? Yes. If if they're going playing it's teams that they know they can beat, no problem. Brody, it's a competition. They don't know it's they can beat them, no problem. It's not a competition if they're going to win. There's still really good teams that go to Blast Pro Series, okay? I suppose. It's but not, it's they're not, not just not like playing nobodies. No, I do, agree, I do agree, though, that you want to make sure to spread out. There are so many events in CSGO, like way too many events in CSGO. Oh, my God. Like so many events Absolutely. that it, it would get tiring if you went to everything. So, exactly. yes, I agree with the ultimate sentiment. And sentiment. players and, and coaches and orgs are going to choose those tournaments <laughs> that treat them well, of course, every single time. And Blast does that. They've got money. End of story. Okay. You agree with me? Oh no, I agree. I agree with the coach. I yes, don't agree. and so do I. Yeah, cool. Okay, fine. I don't Apex agree with Legends, you. shh, quiet. Apex Legends esports is officially and slowly getting underway, but two of its newest events are strange to the least. ESPN will host two Apex Legends events as part of its EXP series at the 2019 SB Awards in July and the X Games in August. The EXP series features a mixture of esports played in different formats and Apex is planned to be a huge part of it. For example, the SB Awards events will see fans playing alongside celebrities and influencers after the show. Brody, straight up, what do you just, what do you think of this? I used to run an event that had multiple <laughs> different esports called EXP, so I'm suing them. Oh my gosh, really? This, I'm suing, no, I don't have money for a lawyer, are you kidding me? Oh, here we go. I just spent money on circle. a lawyer to try to get my license back. <laughs> Oh. It's gonna have to let them do their thing. But no, really, I did. So it's just kind of a weird coincidence. I gotta, I gotta see their ultimate logo, and then <gasps> we'll know. Then we'll oh, know. Oh no. But okay. no, I think this is a sick. I, I will always love events that, um, clearly, that um, showcase a bunch of different esports. We have that a lot of conventions yeah. and stuff. Uh, we'll do that. But um, especially if you can do the esports in different ways, like have different formats and have it be a very chill, lax experience. For sure. I think that's really cool. We need stuff like that. That and we see it especially with battle royales. Yeah. Yeah. is that they, they definitely go the route of entertainment rather than pure competitive integrity because yeah. it's hard to do much more than that with a battle royale, just with the RNG element already built into it, right? Yeah, so for sure. So it's good to show a good, um, fun experience. If you do cool game modes, I used to play um, PUBG with a, a group of guys, and we would do weird game modes, like, you know, with, like, we'd crank up, like, snipers only or, like, all of, so many more vehicles or something. Okay. Um, and that's super fun to see. So we can see even pros starting to do that. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of seems like they're copying Fortnite in a way, though. Like, they're doing influencers, they're doing, right? They've got all is these it, different... Is it copying? Or I mean, like, like is, this, is this the way to go, then, for Apex? Because they're, they've said... ha- seen viewership drop off, they've seen player base drop off as well. Mm-hmm. Is this the way to go? Like, just kind of following the tale of Fortnite Well, here. don't they? They already have also their other event they're doing, too, right? That $50,000 tournament? Yeah, that's so right. I, I so I it's feel like, like they're trying to see which, which one one's going to work. Yeah. Now that we have that big... Remember, I didn't like that $50,000 tournament before, but now yeah, that I see the big... Well, just because I think it was a low price pool, but now I see the bigger picture that they're maybe they're trying a couple events, see which one does better. Yeah. Maybe that that changes it a bit. Now I'm like, okay, after this, maybe we'll get bigger actual competitive events. But I wouldn't be surprised if they went the whole, you know, Fortnite fun route. Fortnite fun route. Fortnite Print fun it. route at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day. At Fortnite the end of the day. fun. Okay, go. Okay. The gaming product no one asked for is here. Microsoft has announced a new line of Xbox themes toiletries. The products include a scented body wash, deodorant, and shower gel. The line will only launch in Australia and New Zealand for now, but it could expand worldwide depending on its performance. And before you ask, yes, this is made by the same company that makes Axe. Rip. Marissa. Rip. You gonna use these? Rip. Uh, First of all, I'm not going to because. Yeah, I love Xbox, but it doesn't seem like they're making it for women, especially if Axe is making Who's it. Who's saying that you can't you can't smell like whatever you want to smell like? I think that Axe... You can honestly, use Axe products. I, I'm sorry. Like I, I, like, I have always hated the way that Axe products <laughs> smell. Completely. Because it's my usually little cousin, because you're in high school and kids are going... Yes, that's exactly it. Kids that choose not to shower and just spray themselves with Axe body spray, Axe that, is, that is not a shower, okay? You just smell like B.O. and Axe, which is a terrible combination. Combination, my God. So the fact that now Axe is making this for Xbox, I don't know, it just seems like very, this is for boys, and I'm not going to go near it. That's just like the vibe I'm that's getting from it. That, that's always been Axe's thing. You should see the commercials. Axe. Yeah. Use Axe, get hot and, grills. Like, yeah. that's always been their, their <laughs> motto, right? Like, and, and I don't think that ever worked ever, one, not one time. No, I, not I one used time Axe, that and it's and never worked. <laughs> not once. Ever. And it didn't fact, work for you at all. As we've learned here, it scares people away. 
because it, it, it is really so does. overwhelming you can't even live anymore. I know. I don't like this partnership for Xbox at all. Um, I wish also that it was being released in the States because E3 is coming up and if we know anything about these conventions is that people should wear deodorant. Now, so they should be giving this stuff away at their booth. That's true. That yeah. no, that's a good. That I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this, why are you selling this? This should be just a, a promo item that you're like, here is yeah. our, our Xbox deodorant and soap. Yeah. Just so when you're going to the end of the shower, you're like, ah, yes, Xbox <laughs> again. And it's just the, the brand's ingrained in your head. But you're not going out and buying these products. That, I, that's that's kind of. No. It is it is a little odd. Now, if they started selling other things that are used in the bathroom, like a plunger or a scrub. <laughs> toilet scrubber that's useful maybe I would just to have like a the gaming themed bathroom right that maybe then but yeah I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the products I already use I need a I need an Xbox themed what is that drain clogger where you just like pull out all the hair I got I got a situation in my shower okay <laughs> all right it's time to check in with streamers in clip it first up we have a clip from Melly Pastel who got a little more than she bargained for when playing Trover saves the universe you know him from his silly family-friendly prop, prop comedy masterpiece, Floppy Props. And he's been a regular on David Letterman for years. Let's give a warm round of applause to Comedy Guy! That is brilliant! I don't get it. <laughs> What do you mean you'll get it? There's nobody there. What? No. Okay, you are very blind. I Just so you guys see. know, I can see. The, the clips are really far from her face, <laughs> and she keeps refusing to go to the optometrist <laughs> to get her eyesight checked. It's just her old stubborn age, I suppose. What was it? There was a dude hanging himself. Oh, what? <laughs> oh my god! That's horrible. <laughs> that's comedy. <gasps> oh my god! That's awful. Is, that Yo, was Trover, oh perfect man. Perfect timing, that was brilliant. Okay, I can't, That was. that's bad. I <laughs> Go can't. get your glasses while we move on to the next <laughs> clip. Our next clip comes from Hachubby as she encounters a real life stream sniper. Hey Hachubby. So weird. It's like she's she's fangirling over her fangirls. She's fangirling fan over her fanboys. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's 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 a, that's a real. Now eventually people keep doing that. That's gonna get old. She's gonna get over it. But that was, yeah, of course. That is a good way, by the way, to stream snipe. That's okay. Just a hello. Yeah. Just goodbye, say hi. Move exactly. On day. I know. Just not being a troll or evil in any yeah. way. Yeah. And expect so nice them to, to talk to you, right? Like she she was given the free. She's like. Hey, all right, I'm gonna leave now, and yeah. they didn't like keep trying to talk to her. Like, no, cool, no, all right, of course see, not. Right. That, that is good at stream sniping. But it, it is kind of scary to have somebody just like say your name as you're walking by, and then like, it, it's startling, right? So I feel like that yeah. was super genuine. I love her so much because she's just so genuine all the time. The, okay, the weirdest one is like if I'm at a place where I'm expecting to hear Leaf. Like if someone's gonna call my name, they'll say Leaf. But then they say Brody because some like if they watch the show or anything where you call me that uh -huh. that weirds me out sometimes when people call so, me by my we real name when wait. I'm at a gaming event. So wait, you want me to call you Leaf here? Not here. No, 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 no. I'm just saying if I'm at a gaming event, uh -huh. it's so weird to hear my real name okay. in all honesty. You, yeah. So that's uh, probably what tripped her up. I see. Okay, I'm gonna move on now. Okay. <laughs> you know yeah. people saying your name. Um, the truly is the best time of the day. Where we scroll the Twitter to bring you all the things the pros bless us with on their timeline. It's the best when they real talk and make us take a second to look at the people we surround ourselves with. Hug says, recognizing the importance of loyalty for my friends now more than ever. I'll be putting way more priority into this and disassociating from those who don't have my best interest in mind. So, um, this has got to be a subtweet, right? That's fair. No, I mean, that's just fairly... Is, I, he's probably just had an event. This has got to be a subtweet. No, he's probably not drum, so he doesn't want to bring up any situation that specifically happened. So he's subtweeting it. So he's... I mean, I suppose if that's what you do, if you got to say that to try to pretend that you're young still and you're using the lingo... Do you know how many people subtweet? So many people just take yeah, to Twitter. Yeah, but he, What I like about Hugs is he ain't drumming it up. He's just like, hey, you know what? 
I'm getting older, I realized uh, priorities in my life, mm. and that's real talk. I mean, like, if people are, are trying, like, you start to recognize that people are trying to hold you back, yeah. or, um, or even just trying to cling on to you in hopes that they'll come along the ride too, yeah. you do have to kind of not cut them off, but you do have to step back and say, you know what, I'm not gonna put as much effort into dealing with yeah. this specific relationship. Brody, it's real talk. Is it lonely up there at the top? Yes. It's very cold. Bring a coat, please. <laughs> <laughs> the Phase Boys are always making top tier content, right? This is considered A plus summertime enjoyment. Phase Scissor says, What y'all know about this? Also, Marissa. Yeah. Have you not done this yet? Because she's the oh one that God. puts these tweets in here, by the way. I do it all the time. Good. This okay, is my good. favorite thing ever. I, th I think we're past the point of validation on this thing. I think it's assumed the rest of the world is getting on board with the Frosty and Fries train. And if you are in chat, you need to get on it and realize that you've been missing out in life. Frosty and Fries. That uh, salty sweet treat uh, is so good. Just the best thing ever. Also, to that, I would also add if you ever had a fudgesicle, you know fudgesicles. Yeah, what are you like about to add to this? Okay, so don't say ketchup it. or anything. No, okay. you get you get potato chips, but okay. like the ruffled kind because they're stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you dip the like you scrape up your fudgesicle with the, the potato chips. So it's like chocolate kind. covered chips, essentially. Exactly, and eat it that way. I prefer with that one to do the sour cream and onion. I don't usually eat sour cream and onion chips, but I will if they're with a the fudgesicle. So you can add a little chocolate to it. So it's like so it's like um, sour cream, onion, potato with the chocolate. It's freaking delicious. I, I was trying to think. There's so many. Oh, I had some weird combinations and I can't remember anymore. Oh, green. On that note, though, chips on burgers are really good too. Oh, heck yes, just chips on everything, okay, everyone? Friend of the show and caster pyrotechnics has discovered something pretty neato. Iron Man is for real, y'all. Variety reporting Robert Downey Jr. has announced the formation of a new organization with the goal of using cutting edge tech to save the environment. Brody. RDJ. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron, Iron Man. You did not mean to do that. No, that was, my brain just broke. Iron Man. <laughs> Iron Man is already real, dude. It's Be Elon real. Musk. Oh, geez. I knew Did you were going to turn know, this into an Elon fun thing. Fact, well, you set me up for it. I know. Fun fact, uh, the uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man in the movies in the MCU is based off of Elon Musk. The writers took inspiration uh, from Elon Musk, and he was actually in Iron Man 2. Elon Musk made a cameo in but didn't but didn't the character of Iron Man um, wasn't that created before no, yeah, Elon yeah, Musk yeah. became but like the a thing? Robert Downey Jr.'s version of it, the okay. MCU version, was based on Elon Musk and what he was okay. doing, a charismatic uh, tech person that's you know leading the future. So Elon. basically, RDJ just wants to be more like Elon. Who doesn't really? Dude's a memer. He has the hottest memes, dude, and he's rich. And he has rocket ships, so we can leave this place whenever he wants to. And you want to go with him? I would love to. Go. I'm going to Mars. Let's move on, because it's time to get to some crowd control. This first post is genius. To add a little extra playthrough, DPO23 removed some of the animations on Telltale's Batman. Yeah. Okay, what? <laughs> Look at what? He's just diving, bro. <laughs> it's almost like a kid playing with their toys. Yeah, it's right? true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> diving and through. Out, and yeah. he, he had like a whole like, um, like a whole like playthrough of that of like fight oh, scenes fun. and everything. It literally I just looks like a kid playing with them. It's oh, sick. I love that. That was a good one, Brody. Sometimes you choose nice clips that oh, I can thanks. see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, check this out. We found video evidence of what it's like to drive in Montreal. I was, it was so perfect. I was originally going to reference the, the city of LA, but actually LA is so like 
chaotically organized. Like people are yeah. so crazy <laughs> driving there that you expect them to be crazy. That it's it's uh, it's okay. It all works out. But, but wait, why no. are you why are you singling out Montreal? Because they will try to there? run you over. <laughs> I have been there, and they will try to run you over. Okay, no, that's only because of the way the the stoplights work. That they turn red, and they and the cross like the crossing light goes. I'm not going to try to figure it out. Just no, be careful it, if you ever go there. <laughs> yes, you have to look both ways before you cross the street in Montreal for sure. Just watch those lights. To end today off, though, let's take a, thro a stroll through The Witcher 3's world in this time lapse by Enigma. So, yeah, so what's crazy about this, there's a, there's a full uh, three minute video. We're not going to watch the whole thing. But I love these time lapses to show how beautiful these worlds can be and how big they are. He's just walking. He's sending it. And, and what's, what's cool, though, is like, these worlds now, instead of being so big and empty, like we've seen in some old games, yeah. they look populated. They look so yeah. full, um, especially with the day-night cycles. Mm. Uh, and what's crazy, I will mention too, okay. that this is only a DLC area. Really? This much, yeah. And keep in mind, we're only watching a small amount of it. It goes on for three minutes. Wow. Three whole minutes. Wow. And that's only DLC area. The Witcher was insane. I haven't. I have bought it. I have and not played, played it. it. Oh. I downloaded it at the same time as uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. So Horizon kind of took over. Yeah, Horizon, another sense. beautiful game. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's Very so insane how deep some of these worlds are, like how long oh you gosh, can get lost in. It's Dude, I know, when E3 is coming and I feel like they're going to show us more Skyrim action or our new Elder Scrolls action, and I'm, gonna get, I'm just going to get lost in it, man. Like, you just, you can't help what it. What are we playing get Skyrim lost. on now? No, 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 it won't be Skyrim. It's going to be the next Elder Scrolls. Well, our mute button has Skyrim on it. <laughs> I just played on that. I guess we'll, we'll use it for something since we haven't been <laughs> each other all week. Listen, that's it for today. Remember, you can always find us on our socials by hitting us up. Someone type in exclamation mark socials right now in the chat to find us. We'll see you next time.